Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. In this video, we will be solving lead code problem number 2009, minimum number of operations to make array continuous. Though this problem is classified as a hard level problem, I would rate this as a medium level problem. And at the end of the video, I have shared some few similar problems that you can solve to understand the concept even better. Okay, now let's understand the problem. In this problem, we are given an array. And for example, this is the first array. What do we have to make? We have to make the array continuous. So what is the definition of continuous? First, let's take this array for example. Now, if you look at these three elements, two, three, four, are they continuous? Yes, the difference between each of them is just one and they are continuous also, two, three, four. But seven and four, are they continuous? No, right? So we have to replace this seven by say five then this will, array will be continuous. So what will be the new array? So the new array will be two, three, four, five. Now, if you look, all the elements here are continuous. So in how many operations can we do this? We just need one operation. What is that operation? We replace the seven by five. We need not worry about the operation, but all we have to give is the number of operations. So here we just have to do one operation or there is other way of looking at this as well. This seven, can be replaced with a 5 also and this 7 can be replaced with a 1 also right so this is another way of looking at the problem and it is an important way of looking at the problem why let's look at the second example if you see here what are the numbers 2 6 7 and 8 now now let's assume 2 is our starting number. So if 2 is our starting number, what are the numbers that we require? 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this case, how many numbers we have to replace? So we have to replace 3 numbers. Is it the correct answer? No, right? We, why? Because we have 6, 7, 8. And what we can do with this 2? We can just replace this to 5. And we will be having 5, 6, 7 and 8. So the first assumption that we did, that is we will make the smallest element as the smallest element of the final array is the wrong assumption right so any element in the array can actually become the minimum element so that is the second observation that we can arrive in this problem right so what do we do if we assume that six seven six is the minimum then then six seven eight and nine will be final array in this case also all we have to do is one operation now let's look at the Next example, so if you look in this example, 7 is there, 8, 9, 10. All of them are already continuous, so we will be requiring 0 operation in this particular example. Now let's look at the next example. So if you look here, all of them looks continuous, right? 2, 3, 4 is continuous, but, but 3 is repeating, 3 is repeating. So it should be having 2, 3, 4 and 5. It should not have... 2, 3, 3 and 4, right? So what do we have to do? We have to replace this 3 with 5. So we just require one operation to make this. Now, once you have seen all this operation, these are the two quick observations that we can draw from this example. What is that? Once we have identified, once we have identified the minimum value, can we define a range? For example, say, we have identified 2 as the minimum. We have identified 2 as the minimum. Now, do we know the range if it has to be continuous? Yes, right. What is the size of the array? The size of the array is 4. So, the range of this is 2, 3, 4, 5, excluding this. Or you can say 2 plus 4 minus 1. That is the minimum element plus the size of the array minus 1. So, this will be our range. So it will start from min and end with this number, right? It will not have any other element. So it will start with the minimum number and it will end with this number. We can take another example also. For example, six. Let's assume this is the minimum value or the starting element of the array. Now, what will be the ending element? It is just six plus four minus one. That is nine. So nine. Right. So this is the first observation that we can draw from this example. What is the second observation? The second observation that we looked here is if if there are any duplicates, does it make sense that we remove the duplicates first? Right. Two, three, four. 
then we will try to add the next element so the second observation is it will make sense to remove the duplicates so now having gone through all this example let's solve a problem using just the brute force approach let's solve all these problems using the brute force approach right so what is the first thing that we will be doing we will be removing all the duplicate elements are there any duplicate elements no now let's assume two as the left thing so two will be our left thing so what is the right thing so we know 2 plus 4 minus 1 that is equal to 5 so 2 and 5 we are done with the ending number now all the numbers that are in this range all the numbers that are in this range so 2 is it in in, in the range yes 3 is it in the range yes 4 is it in the range yes 7 is it in the range no so this will be our answer there is only one element that is not in the range so we just have to replace one element so one will be our answer now let's look at this example let's do the same thing so two and five will be our first and the last element now six seven eight and no are not in the range right so the observation here is that we cannot just assume one element as the minimum element we have to go through all the elements we have to go through all the elements and make them as the minimum element say for example six will be the minimum element now now what is the range the range is six seven eight and nine six and nine this is our range now we go through the entire array once again so is two in the range no two is not in the range six in the range seven in the range eight in the range so the answer in this case will be one again we have to do the same thing for seven also seven and ten in this case it will be two but this since this is the minimum this will be our answer now if you go to this case we will understand this very beautifully why because for 9 what is the range 9 and 12 9 10 11 12 all right so you'll get a different answer here and once you take 7 you will get the answer as 0 we can stop it here and 0 will be the answer all right so now you might be wondering you might be wondering this thought has to come to your mind all right what is that you are wondering say for example I took 6, I took 6 and defined the range to be 6 and 9, 6 and 9 and I found out all the elements that are in this range, that are in this range. Now, as soon as I am done with this 6, I am going to 7 and I am doing the same operation that is I am repeating all the same operation though the difference between them is just 1. Now you might be wondering, does it make sense that we repeat the operation or can we reduce the operations here right yes we can reduce the operation that is the first thing we will be doing is we will be sorting why we have to sort this because because if you look here six and seven the difference is just one if at all if there is a difference between the range the the range difference will also be one and the number of elements that do, don't fit in the, to the range will also be minimum so the first idea is we will sort it right so the first idea is we'll sort it now let's look at this example so we'll be removing the duplicates and let's sort this what is the sorted so 3 5 6 10 12 and 15 so this will be our sorted array so this is the first step of the problem that is we'll, uh, we'll be removing the duplicates and we'll be sorting the array now let's define the range let's assume 3 is our minimum element so if 3 is the minimum element and n is 7 in this case what is the maximum it's 3 plus 7 minus 1 that is equal to 9 so we now know the range 3 and 9 so what do we have to do here we have to find all the elements that are in this range 3 5 7 so 10 is in not in the range now now you will find out do we have to go to the next elements do we really have to go to the ne next element if 10 itself is not in the range all the elements that are present on the right side are definitely not going to be in this particular range so that is the core idea of this so once we have taken this three now how many elements are falling in the range so only three elements are falling in the range if we consider three as the minimum now let's go to the next element the next element is 5 so 5 will be the left 5 plus 7 minus 1 
that is equal to 11 let's see how many elements fall in the range of 5 and 11 so we were here we were here and can we assume that 6 and 10 will definitely fall into the range why because 3 was only able to get these two elements within the range then if we are increasing the left value does this elements for sure fall in the range yes right so we can directly include these three elements and we can start from the next element so 10 sorry these two elements and we can start from 10 so is 10 in the range yes 10 in the range in this case also we will be having three elements that are in the range now let's go to the next element 6 so 6 plus 7 minus 1 that is equal to 12 so once again three elements will be falling in the range so if we go in all the cases in all the cases three elements will be falling in the range so how many elements have to be replaced is it three is it three or is it four it is four right why because we have to consider the original array so what is the answer so the answer in each step is equal to n minus j minus i or n minus j plus i how did i get this how did i get this it is the total number of elements and the number of elements that we have just included in the array say for example we required seven elements in the original array and we found out that we have three elements that can be included in the array so how many elements have to be replaced so four elements have to be replaced so let me repeat the steps what we did we made a unique array first step and then we sorted it and we defined a sliding window range how did we define that so if three is our starting number so if three is our starting number we definitely know the right side or the ending number that is equal to nine so we will increase the value of j so j will go from five j will go to six can j go to ten no j cannot go to gen ten so it will stop here or you can stop the j here as well and you can adjust this formula accordingly right so if we stop the j here if we stop the j here how many elements are included three now again we go to five there is no need to recalculate or reduce the value of j you can just continue the value of j and we can increase the size of the window let me explain the steps that we just did so we created a unique array and we sorted the array then we use sliding window let me share the pseudo code of this problem as well the first step is the first two steps is we are making the unique array we are creating a unique array and we are sorting the unique array we are sorting the unique array then for every element for every element what we are assuming we are assuming this element that is a of i to be the minimum element of the array minimum element of the array and we are defining a range so what is the range it is just pleasant pleasant so what we are doing if at all j is in the range we are increasing the value of j right so if unique of j is in the range we are increasing the value of uh, the range and at every step we are recalculating the answer and we can assume initially the answer to be n that is we will be replacing all the elements but at every step we will be adjusting that is say we have three elements that are present in the range then we will use this formula and find out that there has to be four elements replaced similarly if five elements are there in the range how many elements have to be replaced only two elements have to be replaced so then finally we will be returning the answer and there are a few similar problems and we have a dedicated telegram group where we'll discuss on these problems and this is one easy problem easy problem and this is a medium level problem and these two are hard level problem please do consider solving these problems to understand uh, this concept even thoroughly thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe